Lieutenant, you're going to have to forgive me. We have problems. Too many problems to speak now. But I'm sorry, you'll have to forgive me. I can't speak right now, Lieutenant. Oh, I get it. The cameras. Oh, you're up in that control place. You can see me on those big screens? I'm right. You can see me, right, ma'am? Lieutenant, can we speak tomorrow uh, at the office? No, I I'll call you. I, I definitely promise I'll do that, Lieutenant. I'll call you. Well, it's very important that we talk tonight, ma'am. I'm afraid that's impossible. I'm afraid I'll have to insist, ma'am. I really have to do that. I can't accept that. I can't speak now. Please bear with me, ma'am. It has to do with the car. The 450 SL, the silver one that's registered in your name, the one that Mr. McAndrews bought. That's all very puzzling, ma'am. And there are other things. There's your picture, the professional, and this connection with whoever murdered Mr. McAndrews. And there is a connection. I'm pretty sure of that, ma'am. I'm afraid it's necessary. I know you're under a lot of pressure, ma'am, but there are these things that we should talk about tonight. I don't like to have to talk to you this way, ma'am. I know how you feel, but it's very hard not being able to see you. I told you I have work to do, Lieutenant. This show needs a lot of work. The script needs work. Ma'am. Like I asked you before, this new job you got, would you have it if Mr. McAndrews hadn't been murdered? No. I already told you, I don't think so. I don't think so either. Is that why he bought you the car? Sort of a parting gift, considering your relationship, like he was getting rid of you? I find that very intrusive, Lieutenant. And I don't think you have a right. Oh, I have the right, ma'am. But I understand your feelings. Please, keep bearing with me, ma'am. Sit down. You know, maybe it was fake. But I came within 30 seconds of not seeing your TV movie, The Professional. But I did see it, ma'am. And I noted something very peculiar. So peculiar that I had the projectionists run it again today. And that technical director that I met, he made this up for me on television tape. It's your movie, ma'am. The part where the fellow's in the hotel room and he's going to shoot himself. Now, the technical director told me that there would be an eject button blue. Ah, oh, yes. And a slot. Right here. And an RT button one. Here. There it is, ma'am. Now, we'll just watch this together, ma'am. There it is now. There. There he is. He's by the sink. And there, he's washing. 
there, right there. You see the flash? Yes, Lieutenant. It's a cube blip. And now the second one. There. There's the second cube. Now that's the cue for the projectionist to make his changeover. Am I right, Miss Freestone? Yes, Lieutenant. I'm very impressed. Excuse me, ma'am. I don't mean to interrupt. Right there, that high shot where the man's lying on the hotel bed. That's where the new reel begins. Just watch it, ma'am. And there, that's where the man commits suicide. That's what the projectionist saw right after he got back from the shipping room. That's what Mr. Muir had told me. He came back into the booth, looked up, and he saw a man blowing his brains out. You had to make the change over right before Mr. Muir had got back from the shipping room. Not a few minutes earlier. Not some time before, like he thought. I'm afraid in this case, Walter must be confused, Lieutenant. He checked the footage counter before he left. You must have fooled him about that, man. What I think. I think you changed the footage counter to place yourself in the projection booth at the time of the murder. But really, man, you had time enough to leave the booth and get to Mr. McAndrew's office. Just enough time. Because when you rush back to make the changeover, that's when you must have dropped this glove by the projector. It's Walter's glove. Walter's projection booth. I don't think you have a case against Walter. No, ma'am, not the way he kept that booth so immaculate and all. I don't see him just throwing a glove on the floor. And the lab says that this glove has powder burns on it. And then there's the gun. Mr. McAndrew's gun. The gun that murdered him. The one that you put on the elevator. Our people found it this afternoon. And then we took a second gun, one that looked like this gun, and we put it back on the elevator. But we put it where it could be seen, as if the continuous movement of the elevator had jiggled it, so now it became visible. Watch this, man. That's a TV picture of where we placed the second gun. Just before you got on the elevator with me, ma'am. There it is. Now there. That's the way it looked. Right after you got back on the elevator and came off it. And you'll notice. There is no gun. Not anymore. Because you got rid of it. But this gun, this is the gun that you murdered him with. I see. I'm sure you do, ma'am. It's very odd. They say there's a great sense of relief that comes when something like this is over. I don't feel that at all. Quite the opposite. Will you be taking me? Yes, ma'am, into town. After that. After that, I think I know what will happen. I'll fight. I'll survive. <laughs> I might even win. Yes, ma'am. 
Should we turn this off, ma'am? Doesn't matter. Oh, yes, ma'am, the power shortage. I think I know the right button. Just one more thing.